Mass spectroscopy is something we looked at in unit number two when we were trying to determine a way or means of determining the abundance of various isotopes of naturally occurring elements. Now instead of using elements, we want to use it looking at compounds. So let's review the operation. We begin by vaporizing our sample. So here I'll show in the animation an individual atom being vaporized. That atom is then subject to x-rays in the hopes that those x-rays might knock off an electron from the atom and thereby turn it into a positively charged ion. It's essential that the, ion, that the particle develop a charge. It is then placed between charge plates. Here the positive ion would accelerate to the right through the small hole and then approach our magnetic field. There in the magnetic field, the positive ion would be deflected and where it goes in its path would be then recorded on some detector. And as we send more and more atoms through, we begin to get some sort of distribution on our detector, showing us some idea of the abundance of each of the types of isotopes that would be present in that particular element sample. So now, as I said, we're going to repeat the process, except we're going to use a molecule this time. So we would vaporize our molecule again, expose it to x-rays in the hopes that we could have it develop a charge and then subject it to a magnetic field. And in this particular case for the ethanol molecule, that would then generate a mass over charge ratio of six, meaning I would see an abundance of pikes or hits at point 46. Now, if that particular ion when subject to x-rays was to break apart, which does happen, I would then have two fragments. Let's suppose the fragment on the left develops the positive charge. The mass over charge ratio for it would be 45, and I would get a second peak appearing on my graph, one less than the parent peak. If the positive charge was to reside with the hydrogen, I would get a mass over charge ratio of one and a peak appearing at one. But this substance could also break at another point, at the OH group. And if it broke there, I would have these two fragments. Again, the larger fragment on the left-hand side would have a mass over charge ratio of about 29. And if that charge was to reside with the OH group, then I would have a mass over charge ratio of about 17. And finally, if it broke at this location, on the left-hand side, I would have a CH3 group, and that would give me a mass over charge ratio of 15. And if the positive charge resided with the other fragment, I would have a peak at 31. So that represents my theoretical distribution. At this point, I have no idea as to which one will be favored over which one. So I'm going to assume an approximate equal abundance of each isotope. Let's take a look now at the actual molecular ion distribution. I can see here a large peak at 31. Let's take a look back at what that corresponded to. That was this particular molecular ion. The other fragment that forms, CH3, I see a small peak over there at 15, but it indicates that the positive charge tends to reside with the other fragment. My second largest peak I see at about 45, and that would correspond to ethanol less one of the hydrogens. And finally, I notice the parent peak, the peak on the far right hand side. That particular peak corresponds to the whole molecule without any part of it breaking off. So there I've identified three of the major peaks that are present. The other peaks happen in lesser amounts. So it's not necessary that you're going to get an equal distribution of all of the peaks that you theorize. Inevitably, some peaks will be favored over others, and you have no way of knowing until you collect the evidence. Let's look at the mass spectrum of the chemical propone, propanone. Propanone is a member of the ketone family with a double bonded oxygen in the center. The peak I see on the far right hand side at 58 is the parent peak. It's the whole molecule passing through developing a positive charge with nothing breaking off. I'd like to just point out the small peak you see appearing at 59. It perhaps could be due to the occasional atom of carbon or hydrogen, which is of the heavier isotope. If my propanone broke at the location indicated here, I would have these two fragments. If the fragment on the left developed a positive charge, I would end up with the peak that you see at 43. If the positive charge resided with the CH3 group, 
I would see a peak then at 15. It's worth noting some of the common fragments you'll see in mass spectroscopy, and I've listed those over here at the side. So a peak at 15 for the CH3 group. If it's a two carbon chain, ethyl, you'll probably see a peak at 29. CHO is due to the aldehyde group, 29 as well, and COOH, the acid group, is 45. You should note that those fragments can occur in two ways. They could appear as the positive ion itself, or it could appear as a loss of mass from the parent peak. In both situations, the same fragment, depending on who develops the charge, could appear on your mass spectrograph. So I hope that you found that introduction to mass spectroscopy of compounds somewhat useful. And again, comments are always appreciated. Thanks for watching.